Now, me personally, the period of 2007 to 2009 in terms of R&B, I will always keep associating that with Neo since he's the artist that I was exposed to the most in that time period. So in this video, we're actually making a beat that I feel would be a good fit for Neo and, you know, would fit in that contemporary sound in that time period with a lot of synths and a lot of percussion, of course. But we're also paying tribute to a producer who I feel that every aspiring producer of R&B and hip hop needs to study and that is Ryan Leslie. Or at the very least, I feel that there should should be a syllabus and the videos of him making ambition and I get money should be studied religiously because I certainly did. So either way, we are making a beat for Neo. We're paying a little bit of tribute to Ryan Leslie as well with a lot of synth heavy sounds. Let's go. So in order to craft this beat, I solely relied on the beautiful sounds of the Quark Triton, I relied on a Neptune's drum kit by the Lunch 77, and I relied on a couple of loops from Splice just to add some extra percussion. Those are the ingredients. I make it sound simple, but allow me to start breaking it down, starting with the chord progression. All right, beautiful folks, welcome back, and it is always a pleasure to have you joining me into FL Studio. So as we gaze upon this chord progression written in the key of D sharp minor, you can see that it's actually nothing special in terms of techniques, you know, in terms of techniques, all I really did was use some inversions. You can see that I am rocking with a G sharp minor ninth chord right here. And this is actually an inverted A sharp um, dominant seven chord with a flat nine. So basically my chord progression is one, six, five, and that's basically it. But the cool thing is, is that I use a cool little technique called call and response, which I wanna touch on just a little bit. But, you know, in terms of the chord progression, it is super simple. It is a um, D sharp, hold on, this is a D sharp minor ninth chord right here. It is an uh, inverted, hold on, this actually needs to go up there. It is an inverted G sharp minor ninth chord right there. And it is an inverted A sharp dominant seventh chord with a flat nine. That's basically it. And here you can see at the end, because I, if you've listened to the preview carefully, you can see there's a cool little passage where it really builds up to a... Um, climax or a transition into the next part that's basically just a g minor seven chord and an a, a g sharp minor seven chord and an a sharp minor seven chord right here i think i'm going a little too fast because i'm super enthusiastic but i'm gonna add some uh, notation so you can follow along at your leisure so have a listen to the chord progression and then we're going to talk about the call and response bit So call and response, you know, there's multiple ways to describe call and response, but it's, you know, I think I can best describe it with an example from hip hop. And that is the infamous, can I kick it? Yes, you can. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. That is a perfect example of call and response. And you've got a lot of those in terms of instrumentation in jazz, soul, gospel, and a lot of music genres. So the way I'm using it here is that you have these free chords, which feel like they're posing a question which is being answered by this little uh, six note lick right here. So you get the da, 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 and that just keeps repeating all over the beat. And that's really what makes this beat so characteristic. It really helps it stand out. You've got three chords which are like posing a question or a chant and then you have this lick answering it and you know repeating that throughout the beat really really makes this beat come into its own and i just keep doing that you know until we have this little um 
passage right here which builds up to a climax so call and response beautiful people use that in your beats to make them stand out so the main takeaway from this chord progression is that you can introduce complexity with complex chords and complex techniques but you can just also stick to a couple of techniques and then go really nuts with your layering which i'm about to show you as we're heading into sound selection right now Sound selection, beautiful people. Let's get it popping. So what you're seeing on screen right now is every single patch that I use in the Cork Triton to carefully craft the sound for this beautiful beat. You can see a collection of synth patches. You can see a string patch. You can see a bass patch, a synth lead, and a guitar doing the work, playing that little melody, of course. Uh, I'm going to be playing them all to you so you can see exactly how they're contributing to creating the vibe of this beat. And then I'm going to divide them in the chord layers, in the melody layers. Uh, no, just the core layers and the melody layers, actually. So let's get it popping. So you've been able to listen to the entire sound ensemble. I just wanted to touch on the individual layers real quick. And I want to admit to y'all, I actually use a different synth patch for the verse because I didn't want it. I didn't want something that sounded as powerful. I wanted something that sounded a lot more low key. So I switched out this patch right here, the detuned uh, synth brass. I switched it out for the Epic Trans Stab, which basically does the same, but it sounds significantly different, you know, and also to the listener. So it really gives them the feeling that you're in a different part. So I had this, uh, I was super proud of this. This is when I knew, cool, we got something. I decided to supplement that with strings, you know, strings really a good way to add some airiness and some, some weight to call it like that to your beat and that's when i got popping uh you know with the guitar melody and the synth melody and with the bass so they all really started contributing and you know i feel that i really did a good job at choosing some sounds that really inspires some of that you know late 2000s nostalgia in the beat So for the people that have been listening very carefully to all of the layers, yes, I did snuck in a little melody that you're familiar with. It is the melody that you're hearing in So Sick by Neo. I thought it was a cool, subtle touch. Um, I fully realized that if I'm ever going to sell this beat, I'm going to have to take it out because ain't nobody got time to be sued by whoever's owning Neo's masters. But, you know, I thought it was a cool touch. So I hope you can appreciate that. So what you're seeing right now on screen is every drum sound that I use for this beat. And all of them are from the Neptune's drum kit by the Lunch 77. I wanted to go heavy on an up-tempo groove. I wanted something that was bouncy and dynamic, and I wanted to go real heavy on the percussion, and these sounds helped me accomplish just that. Now, I'm going to play them to y'all. Of course, you're, you're going to hear them in the playlist, so get an idea of what the drum groove sounds like in combination with the sounds that I just demoed in the sound selection. I've said it with the previous three videos about the late 90s beat, with the Dark Child beat, with the Usher kind of 2000s beat. You know, the way I set my percussions up is I start with my kick and my clap or snare or snap or whatever as my anchor and the space that is left 
between those two, I start filling up with percussions. And you know, you can add different rhythms. Some of them are eight notes. Sometimes you can play with a 16 note pattern, a 30 second note pattern. You can play with something that, you know, is kind of syncopated, something that is really on the in-betweens, you know, something that, that experiments with rests and stuff like that. That's how you get a groove. You want a, you don't want a static groove. You want a groove that really keeps you moving, that really allows you to hyper-focus on one of the percussion layers and follow it along and then get that feeling of, oh shit, this layer has layers. So beautiful folks, that wraps up this video, this short and sweet video on the essentials of how to craft a dope 2007 R&B beat. I really hope that to you it was a good tribute to the sound of Neo and the sound of Ryan Leslie in particular, because I think that he is a genius hyper intelligent you know composer and i wanted to give it a little bit of ryan leslie flair what with the synth uh licks and all that and the call and response so i hope i did that justice but you know without all that i do hope that you enjoyed this beat i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope to see y'all in the next of course and y'all be easy peace